And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Rakdos Sacrifice to start the day off with. And we have a unique list here from a viewer in chat that donated for it. Let's take a look at this one. So this isn't just like your normal Rakdo sacrifice with a lot of, with, you know, like gutter bones and priest of forgotten gods. We're going bigger here. Um, you can see that we have, uh, we obviously still have the witches or the, yeah, the witches oven cauldron familiar combo, of course, that's going to be a, a big part of our deck. And of course we're playing our mayhem devils, but you can see we're, our curve is really focused on 3, 4, and 5, just having more powerful individual cards. We have, uh, we, we're obviously doing our, our Mayhem Devil stuff. We got Chandra's, because Chandra um, makes two creatures, then you do sacrifice those creatures, so it's a good attacker that doesn't die to a sweeper, that you know gives you a different angle of attack. And of course, those creatures, you get to trigger the Mayhem Devil whenever you sacrifice them. A whole bunch of Bedevils, where we can destroy opponents witches ovens because witches ovens are a really big part of the metagame right now <clears throat> or any other creature or planeswalker and then uh rankles which i absolutely love rankle i think rankle is just a really strong card this is one of my favorite cards in throne of eldraine <clears throat> works really really well with chandra acolyte of flame that can make uh like the the little one one creatures that you can sacrifice for the each player sacrifices a creature claws in rankles triggered ability we also have a couple of Chandra Fire Artists to get, Artisan to give us some more gas. Sarkin to help finish out games. They can also make our three mana Chandra another threat. And then even a God Eternal Bantu that we can kind of combo kill with the Mayhem Devil. Um, if we got a Mayhem Devil or two in play, just sacrifice tons of permanents, get tons of triggers. Or, of course, refill our hand also. So of course we have a since we have the the bigger curve we got 25 lands in here, including a mobilized district give it give us another uh, different angle of attack there. So this looks pretty interesting. Um, I'm excited to try out Leyline of the Void against other Cauldron Familiar decks. See how good they are. Um, sideboard we got some different threats depending on what we want. If they're a non-creature deck, we're going to be bringing in war bosses. If they're not doing any blocking. <clears throat> we'll be bringing in war bosses to do some attacking if they're trying to gain life. We got Tybalt. Um, also have a Theater of Horrors for another card advantage engine in here. So a lot of interesting card choices overall, and it'll be um, be a fun league. Let's let's give it a try. So like we always do with our donation decks, we're gonna play it till we win five or lose two, whichever happens first. Yep, yep, Chandra does a great job recasting and removal, uh, especially the Angrass Rampage is our main removal spell um, that she can recast, but then after sideboard uh, gets even more, more versatile. I love three mana Chandra with Duress. I think those two work really well together. We're going to need more than one land. Hmm. We are keeping... The high upside play is getting rid of the Bedevil and being able to have the, the two Mayhem Devils still. <clears throat> the safer play is just getting rid of a Mayhem Devil, and then we have like, you know, this interaction here. Hmm. Could also just get rid of a Reveler. That's that's not very safe though. Nice, Bronk Song. Destroying three Witches Ovens with one Blast Zone. That's a good feeling. Ooh, that's not good. No, Destiny, I won't I won't be watching the Mythic Championship this weekend because I'm gonna be playing, you know, I'll be streaming. Um, like always. And, you know, it's, it's right at, during when I'm going to be streaming. But, of course, I'll see the results and everything. Over on my Patreon page today, I did write um, some uh, 
just kind of predictions for like what decks will do well, what decks won't do well, and so on, stuff like that. Uh, that's why I wrote over on Patreon today. Well, unfortunately, our deck is not set up to fight the type of removal my opponent's playing. We do have an Angrass Rampage, I mean, and Bedevil. Both of those could destroy the artifacts. It could destroy Glass Casket. I'm basically just... I know that we're not getting the trigger off of a Mayhem Devil by doing this right now. I just wanted to thin the deck. Hey, Pedro. Hey, Deacon. Hawkeye still got his cold. Unfortunately, they didn't have too early of a... kind of want to sack the Reveler. I'm sacking two lands. I'm keeping three. They didn't have a <clears throat> a time slot. Um, the vet didn't until Tuesday. He's gonna wait till Tuesday to take in Hawkeye because he's, he's just got a runny nose and a cold. Yeah, poor guy. And I try to like if I try to wipe his nose, he doesn't like that at all. Glad to be. And he doesn't. Your problems are mine. He doesn't like a tissue in front of his face. You're not well you'd bet good for you. Shuffling me off my mortal coil. Chandra Nalar, Pyromancer Extraordinaire. Mostly. Well, Kaya is awesome in this matchup. You must feel pretty smart right now. Obviously I could play Cauldron Familiar, but then the Kai will just exile the Cauldron Familiar. Better watch hey, your back from here on out. This Kaya was really annoying. With help. Bye -bye. I'll be back. You better watch your back from here on out. Well, that worked.
Okay. So we get to start attacking the Kaya again now. I mean, that's not a bad trade, trading a land for two spells on their side. <laughs> I bet you can't hit me again. All right, so they can exile one of the Cauldron Familiars, but then that puts them down to two loyalty, and we'll be able to kill the Kaya with the with the Chandra Zero. Uh, I'll be back. Just you wait. Oh, that really hurts. That really, really hurts. If they would have just bricked this draw step, because obviously we were going to be able to zero make a whole lot of creatures to be able to sacrifice our our. God Eternal Bond 2 is going to be awesome. Hmm. At least we'll kill this thing. They scry to the top. So that's not a great sign. Hopefully a land. Alright, cool. Five six has menace, right? Yeah. Alright, so we got fifteen lands out of here. Ooh, not attacking the Chandra. All right, this is Billy Squire, the Stroke. What's that smell? Oh, it's you burning. So then, yeah, the trigger make them like each player lose a life draw card. All right, well, we fought through a whole lot there. All right, do we want a Tybalt in this matchup? Wish we had destroy target enchantments. The Bantu was sweet. Let us cycle through a lot of... Um... Oh, thank you so much, Honors. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so we fought through a lot. Got a lot of enchantment removal. I feel like the Mayhem Devil is one of my worst cards. Obviously, the Rampage Bedevil. We probably don't need eight of those. I like how we can just turn into a bigger Rakdos deck. Obviously, you know, we could play War Boss and Tybalt. Probably want War Boss. Definitely want War Boss, I mean. We could play the Tybalt. I'm not sure how much I want Tybalt, though. So this is what we're looking at here. Would we rather have Tybalt over any of these other cards?
don't think so. Could be that five copies of Ramp, you know, Rampage and Bedevil. Maybe five is too many still. I like to vote more than Remati Reveler, but I'd rather just have the two drop. So it looks like a good hand to mulligan. All right, one prison realm down. The problem with this Fable Passage is it does turn on my opponent's Drown in the Lock pretty well. If you show remorse, That's kind of I'll annoying. Alright, good start for us. Glass casket. Of course, we can bedevil the glass casket. So doing this, so that, well, I guess that's a card. I basically, I ordered it like that because I wanted to be able to kill the, you know, kill the Thief of Sanity and not let the Drown in the Lock counter my Bedevil, but also not let the, like, after I do that, then I'd have three cards and then Drown the Lock would kill War Boss. So if I just do it right away... Then Drown the Luck would just be able to kill the war boss. Let us fight. <laughs> uh. That hurts. When people start screaming, there's no problem. Fire can't solve. If I try attacking out and try to mentor onto the 1-1, one, one, it's still going to take the 1 damage first. I'm the active player. My triggers will go on the stack first. Theirs will go on the stack second, so theirs will resolve first. So it will take the 1 damage before the mentor. Look to the skies. So 
So it looks like I can't do damage to the Sarkin anymore whenever it's a creature. I was wondering how that was going to work. It didn't even let me target Sarkin. Definitely want to do the we both lose a life draw card and we both sacrifice a creature. I guess I do discard also because the Sarkin's not really going to win this for me, I don't think. I'm looking for something to do one point of damage here. All right, can we get one point of damage in? We're so close. Come to me. All right, so they didn't make a 4-4 blocker. They would rather attack for four. Bounce the Sarkin. I know my responsibility. I'll protect mm. you. Didn't bounce the Sarkin. Oh, I wish we had one more mana and I could play both of my cards. So is it more likely that the Rankle kills him or that the Chandra kills him? I guess it's more likely that the Chandra kills them. Yeah, I gotta hope it's not a counter spell. Good. If it's just instant speed removal, that won't be good enough. Unless it gains life. Moment of craving. I will consume you. All right, we got him. Victory. All right, we're one to know. I like that. I like how we're just kind of playing a mid-range game, you know? Like, we have, like, the sacrifice stuff in there, but we're not, you know, like, we're not all in on that. Uh, sacrifice stuff where we get to play a, a bigger game with cards that are just pretty good like like the Chandra's uh, we don't yeah I don't know if they had removal or not they just conceded whenever I attacked the two creatures they just conceded so I don't know uh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We could just get one mountain, that's all we get? What is this? Three straight hands of just one mountain? We have 25 lands in here. How do we get three one-landers in a row? Like, do I just do I just not play anything and just let them have th this game? Mm -hmm. 
It's not like playing the turn the land on turn one or playing it later on. It's not that big of a difference. But if you know, if we would have drawn like a black source immediately. Um, basically what we need is Black Source and Cauldron Familiar, of course. And then, you know, like, Triple Witch's Oven with Cauldron Familiars. Alright, so we know what they're doing. Am I supposed to put? Am I supposed to play Leyline of the Void? The thing is, <clears throat> so we don't quite know if they're Esper with Dance. Um, you know, like they're they're obviously going to be playing Doom Foretold. It's just it's unclear whether they're Esper, Orzov, or Mardu. The most likely, of course, is Esper. But it's possible they're not playing dance. Can we get away with like basically none of these removal spells? Probably not. We'll play some removal spells. I couldn't I couldn't really play it out a bit more. I would have had to go to discard there. So my opponent would have been able to see what I was doing whenever I went to discard. I could have mulled the four, but Honestly, that hand, that five card hand did have the, it did have the ability to win if we would have drawn Black Source Cauldron Familiar right away. You know, Triple Witch's Oven can, can win a game. And so that's why I kept to that five. I got to see them play three turns. Um, I did play the wrong card here. I, I'm supposed to play the Cauldron Familiar first, by the way. I was kind of talking and just clicked on the wrong card. But yeah, I should you should leave with the culture familiar because then I could have attacked for one this turn. Twenty five lands. We can't even draw a third. At least we drew a second this time. Kind of seems like they're just Orzov. Deck. Land. You've got to be kidding me. Because even if we draw a land here, you know, we get to play War Boss. We make a 1-1. A one, one, we sack the 1-1 one, one to be able to bring back the Cauldron Familiar and can keep on basically doing that.
Well, that was a pretty bad match. <laughs> that was a pretty bad match. One lander, one lander, one lander. Don't draw a land, but didn't really have a way to win. Or, you know, like didn't really play any magic. And then uh, keep a two lander, don't draw any lands. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't bring up Deckmaster. Thanks for reminding me. All right, bringing up Deckmaster now. If Mobilized District was a red land, we could keep it, but it's not. It's the cost of playing Mobilized District. It was really good for us, that other match against Esper. We drew it later on, but that's the cost is you'll have it in your opener sometimes, and then you can't keep your hand because of it. So Cauldron Familiar is not doing anything unless we draw Witch's Oven. There's only four Witch's Ovens in the deck. I think I'd rather keep a backup Chandra. I liked it more whenever we were drawing lands and could play our spells. Instant punished. Instant punished. Our curve really starts at three with this deck. We have four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 three drops which is crazy high. And this is just game after game after game where we only have two lands. Can't really win that way. When everything costs three and you have two lands. It's pretty simple math. Um, obviously looking back at it, getting rid of the Cauldron Familiar, keeping Chandra was obviously a horrible decision, because we, I should have known we were drawing double Witches Oven back to back. All right, we finally got our third land. Fortunately, it doesn't matter. Um... All right, so they're aggressive version of Teamer Adventure. <clears throat> Unfortunately, besides these re these lava coils, we don't really have good cards against aggressive decks. I guess we can try the flame sweeps. Maybe we need some more anti-aggro cards. I think I think these two Tybolts need to be two anti-aggro cards, not Tybolts. Because we saw even against the Esper deck, we really just didn't need Tybolt. Our deck is filled like we have we have so many threes already. I think that that's the main thing is we need to change these Tybolts for more removal. Probably like Noxious Grasp. Like Noxious Grasp would be a good one. I guess it's not really completely anti-aggro though. 
anti-questing beast. Rampage could be tough. If they're, you know, like they just make like the one-one token, easy to sacrifice. I think three mana Chandra may be our worst card here, though. Even though it can recast a removal spell if you untap with it. Attacking with a couple little one ones. When their creatures are a lot bigger and they, they're a lot faster, it's just not that's not gonna win any any race. This is not ideal. Yeah, we're playing against Gruul right now. Uh, well, I guess technically Teamer. Uh, they're an aggressive adventure deck probably splashing brazen borrower and maybe royal scions probably those two cards and then sideboard stuff yeah there's 25 land in here This is kind of the problem with, with Rampage being a removal spell. Ugh. Well. We get to make this block trade and now rampage can actually take out questing beast so that's that's really nice and want to do that even though bedevil uses my mana better yeah i know the rimrock couldn't block but i didn't i didn't want to trade damage there i don't think that it, me attacking for three and them and then letting the rimrock hit me for three was a good proposition on my side. So I did an attack. So that's not a good trade. <clears throat> you know, not a good damage trade, that is. Our bond was forged in battle. <laughs> and many training sessions. So Mayhem Devils have looked pretty pretty bad. Oh, come on. Their cards are so good, they don't even want to loot any away. <laughs> Just had three perfect cards in hand. It's not like they rummage. They get to draw first and then discard. Do your worst. <laughs> 
The only thing that keeps me from dying is playing this. Obviously, if they can just remove the dragon, I die. Um, but and all the other things killed me immediately. I am Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. And that kills me immediately. So our deck looked pretty good against. Looked pretty good against the the control deck that wasn't putting threats out there, but looked much too slow against the deck that's putting out threats. Look like a, so like against the against like the control deck, I really liked how we had like this higher curve and and just these cards that were just really good on their own and and you know we got to outgrind the control decks. But against the other deck with creatures, our curve is just much too high and and too slow. Like these these cards. You know, Mayhem, like, just playing three mana, three threes. And this thing is not good on defense. Like, we, you know, we can't really protect from our opponent killing us if they're faster. Um, I guess the main fix for that would be, uh, you know, lowering the curve completely, like normal Rakdos sacrifice decks. We don't really seem to be a very good Mayhem Devil deck. We basically have to have this combo going for Mayhem Devil to kind of do anything. Well, it makes Little Chandra and Fabled Passage a little bit better. Doesn't make them a lot better. So I kind of like... <clears throat> so I guess what I'm saying is I kind of like having a... Um, a Rakdos midrange-ish deck going a little bigger. I think there's, I think there's a lot of good stuff you could probably do with that. But I don't think it's really Mayhem Devil and Chandra Acolyte of Flame. I think Acolyte of Flame is kind of just like a a cyborg card for control. And Mayhem Devil wasn't wasn't very good. I, I didn't like these two cards. Not exactly sure what that would look like, though. Anyway, in the sideboard, like we were talking about, the Tybalt, the Tybalt's definitely overkill for the same kind of matchups that we're going to be good against. Um, we need more, more cheaper removal. Like Legion's End could be a good removal spell for us to be playing. Um, in the sideboard, Noxious Grasp, another one. I guess small creature stuff. You're, I guess if you can get Mayhem Devil out and act, you know have mana and actually get to play it and, and play these things, you're going to be okay against small creature stuff. Yeah, that's that's the the normal way to play Rakdos sacrifices. Definitely Priest of Forgotten Gods and claim the Firstborn. That's definitely the normal way to play. Um, this deck was looking to try to do something a little different, try to go bigger, and I, I think it was good against the slow decks. But yeah, against against other creature decks, our deck, this deck seems pretty weak against other creature decks. To be honest. And to change that, we just have to you know, completely overhaul <clears throat> the whole deck there, probably. Um, our land situation, you know, like, you know, we're playing the 25 lands here because we're trying to hit land drops, but just all, both of our losses, you know, we were just stuck on lands a lot and that really hurt but that's that's also just the problem with this curve with playing 15 cards that cost three that's honestly kind of just a, a problem with 
with deck building having a, a curve that looks like looks like this. Um, you really want to be having like just as many twos as threes, or maybe more twos than threes, honestly. Or you know, you really want this to be a lot more even. There's a huge difference between a card costing two and three mana, because you know, like when if you have multiple cards that cost two, just on turn four you get to start double spelling. This deck's not really double spelling until turn six with all of these three drops, and that's just too late to start double spelling. So that's that's kind of like the thing that I don't like about the deck is is how everything costs three. I wish like four of these cards, at, like I wish that we got rid of like four of the three drops, and had like three of them cost, at least three of them cost two or less, and maybe one maybe one more powerful top end card since we can usually get towards the top end. Um. So maybe that's just Bedevil. Like maybe that's the, maybe that's what you have to do is just not play Bedevils, if you want to have these other three drops. And like instead of playing Bedevils, you have to play cards like, um, Lava Coil and I don't know, like Legion's End or something. Even though they're they're obviously not as good of removal spells, but just to make the curve kind of work. And then you can play um, some other four or five mana real big card, or, or maybe just playing, actually probably just playing something like, probably just playing like Liliana. Yeah. And then, and then the curve looks a little bit better um, where not everything's costing three. Uh, you don't have like targeted removal for planeswalkers, but you have like for planeswalkers, you do have like all the Angrass rampages. Usually, there's not like multiple planeswalkers on the battlefield. You make them just sacrifice whichever one they have. I don't really like Sarkin very much, just in general. Um, this isn't a, yeah, this just isn't a card I really like that much. I would I would honestly just much rather prefer Liliana's in a deck like this. I think Liliana's just a whole lot more impactful and better card, even though it costs one more. But you could play like two Liliana and then like an extra Bantu um, or an extra Doom Whisper or um, <clears throat> um, or something else that costs four. Some other card there. Could play like a Cavalier, where Cavalier gets back Midnight Reaper and Mayhem Devil when it dies. But I don't know if we have quite enough creatures to sacrifice. Maybe with the Acolyte of Flames you do, though. And I'm not sure if we have like enough, you know, black or red to make either of the Cavaliers completely reliable. Hey, Azraleth. Hello, hello. I'm doing good. Yeah, I just I just don't feel like Sarkin's nearly impactful enough. But yeah, Liliana, all of those abilities are all really good. You know, you get to draw a lot of cards. Um, both the plus and the minus work really well. And then, of course, yeah, threatens just to win the game on its own with the minus nine, where Sarkin's pretty easy to deal with. There's tons of shocks and bone crusher giants to like you know, Bone Crusher Giant just kills the Sarkin and just goes down to two loyalty right away. The four four isn't really even the best blocker, especially with all the brazen borrowers that are around that can just bounce the four four. Could also play Bedex instead of like Legion's Ender Lava Coil if you want Bedeck. I liked the war boss in the sideboard. I liked that. I think I like war boss more than theater of horrors. 
honestly. Warboss is the kind of card that's that's definitely really good in multiples. So playing a lot of Warboss in the sideboard is probably good. Maybe that's what you do and play get like that extra bedevil in the sideboard. The, you also have to kind of worry about everything costing three in the sideboard though too. But I do really like being able to pivot towards war bosses. Maybe another wrinkle. Wrinkle's pretty awesome. Scorching dra dragon fire over lava coil. Um, yeah, could definitely go with dragon fire. Basically, Lava Coil is going to be better against Questing Beast, of course, because it, you know, it actually gets to kill Questing Beast. But besides that, Dragonfire is going to be better against most everything else. That's really like the the one card that has that fourth point of toughness. Now, it's a very important card to kill, so that's that's a really important one. Could just could just not play that extra Bond too, and then just play two Dragonfire. Also, just go two Lava Coil, two Dragonfire. And, you know, just have, have some more cheap interaction like that. Because I, I do like how, yeah, Dragonfire, you know, can kill uh, Planeswalkers that minus, like Teferi and Narset can kill those things right away. Um, and then, of course, has instant speed and, and can take out, you know, like Edgewall Innkeepers and all that kind of stuff. Can take out cheaper stuff. I really do like the Exile these days. Um, do you think Exile is pretty important? Whether it's the innkeeper decks that are trying to get their you know use like find to, to get their creatures back i uh, like the golgari decks that can bring their creatures back or like the other cauldron familiar decks i do like that quite a bit and then like rampage is basically your planeswalker removal where dragon fire can kind of help you kill planeswalkers also with mayhem devil um So yeah, those are these are some things to to maybe think about changing here. I like how this looks more. Um, yeah, the curve curve definitely looks a lot better. We're not gonna just be stuck with tons of three drops anymore. Um, and I think Liliana is just gonna take over games. Where Sarkin doesn't. Sarkin's like, if you're far ahead already, then Sarkin can, can help finish it out. But if you're behind or like even, it's it's just it's a pretty average five drop. Where Liliana can just be devastating in all with all aspects. And obviously, if you have called your familiar witches oven going and then you just drop a Liliana, you get to draw draw some cards with that as well. Okay, so there we go. Rakdos Sacrifice. Um, I guess last thing with the mana base. I think I'd, I'd want to keep on trying the Mobilized District a little bit more. Before, you know, I don't want to just say that it has to go. I'd want to give it a, a little bit more shots. And, yeah, and try it out some more. I'm not sure if four castles are too necessary, but I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, I could see just having a handful of like mountains and castle lock twain, and like if, if your hand is just you know if you don't have these twelve lands, if you don't have swamp, blood crypt, or fabled passage, so like if you don't have any of those twelve lands, your mana base would be annoying with like the castles coming into play tapped and mountain and mobilized district, but. Maybe that's not even really that big of a deal, just being able to play the castle turn one anyway. All right. Ragtail Sacrifice. Um, hey, Sarah Angel. All right. Uh, you know, tried something a little bit different with the archetype. It didn't work out perfectly, but um, here's a little bit of tuning that I think could really help out the deck. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Also, leave some comments. Let me know uh, if you try out like this updated deck list, how it works out for you, what you think of going bigger 
with the Rakdos sacrifice theme. Also, we were just talking a little bit ago how I uh, had a new Patreon post today where I uh, predicted what decks would do well and not do well um, this weekend for the Mythic Championship. So you can check that out also at patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. If you like to like my videos, like to help support over there. But uh, that's it here for Recto Sacrifice. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.